Hey, how's it going? And welcome to Consuming Cinema, a show about making and pairing food and drinks from popular movies and TV shows. Today we're making an apple teeny with lacquered pork and tuna tartare from The Social Network. If you haven't seen The Social Network, it is a 2010 David Fincher film about Mark Zuckerberg, a Harvard student and computer genius who has a pretty sweet blog name, but some really bad problems with women. I mean, like, really bad. With the financial backing of his friend Eduardo, Mark starts a website called The Facebook, the idea of which he may or may not have stolen from these large waspy twins that like to row crew. The scene we're talking about today occurs when Mark, Eduardo, and Eduardo's girlfriend Christy go to a posh restaurant in New York City where they meet the founder of Napster, Sean Parker, who appears to be a regular there. After introducing himself, Parker sits down and says, You guys don't have anything in front of you. No. Tori. We were waiting. Hey, baby boy. Can you pronounce some things? Mm -hmm. The lacquered pork with that ginger comfy tuna tartare. Better get it started. Christy, what do you like to drink? An apple teeny. Great. Let's get started with our lacquered pork with ginger confit, for which we'll need three quarters of a pound of pork belly, which we'll put into a bowl along with one quarter cup of kosher salt, one quarter cup of sugar, one teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon of crushed red pepper flake, one teaspoon of ground black pepper, and half a teaspoon of sesame oil, which you should probably rub on the pork prior to putting on the rest of the spices. Now incorporate those spices and mix well so there's a nice thick layer of rub on the pork. With the sheet of plastic wrap, wrap up our pork nice and tight like so. Next, grab another sheet of plastic wrap and wrap up the pork even tighter. Then refrigerate overnight or at least for three hours. The longer you let the pork dry brine, the more flavor it will have. When the pork is out of the fridge, rinse and pat it dry. You will notice the meat has changed dramatically in color and darkened as it has cured. This is a crucial step in the confit process. Speaking of confit, let's move on to our ginger confit, for which we'll need one tub of rendered duck fat, just the standard size at any store will do. Put the duck fat in a small Dutch oven. Cover and preheat in a 250 degree oven until both the oven and the duck fat reach 250 degrees. Next, we'll need a lot of ginger. I don't have a specific amount for you, you just need a lot. Cut that ginger into cubes, like so. Then when the Dutch oven is preheated, we'll first put our pork in fat side up. This will allow the fat to render and baste the pork as it cooks. Surround the pork with the ginger, then cover and bake in an oven at 250 degrees for six hours. Three hours later and we check on our pork and it should look something like this. You'll see that all that fat from on top of the pork belly has rendered out and begun basting the pork belly beneath it. Now we're going to turn that pork belly and we're going to baste it again. And we're going to want to repeat this process two to three times within that six hour span. Now cover and return to the oven while we work on the rest of our meal. When there's about 20 to 30 minutes left of the pork, we can get started on our tuna tartare, for which we'll need one quarter pound of ahi tuna, which we'll cut into cubes. You may also notice that I now have a band-aid on my hand. This band-aid serves as an important reminder of two things. One, always have a sharp knife when cutting fish, and two, always be prepared with the proper safety equipment when cooking. To our tuna, we will add one green onion, chopped as well as one shishito pepper, also chopped, along with a teaspoon of sesame seeds, and a teaspoon or less of soy sauce. Do not use more than one teaspoon as it will overpower the fish, and one quarter teaspoon of wasabi. This is just the packet they gave me when I bought my tuna. Now incorporate all those ingredients and mix well, and refrigerate while we work on the second half of our tuna tartare, which begins with one small avocado pitted and scored We'll put that avocado into a bowl along with another chopped shishito pepper. Mix this combination together like you're making a guacamole. Into the vessel you want your tartare, we are going to put a ring mold. If, like me, you don't have a ring mold, you can fold together a piece of tin foil like so and staple it so it's about three inches wide. Into the tin foil, <clears throat> I mean, into the ring mold, layer your avocado and shishito mixture. Press it down so it's nice and even. Next, we layer in our tuna. Make sure to press it down so it's even as well. Now refrigerate for a few minutes while we finish up the rest of our meal. After six hours, we take our pork belly out of the oven and it looks spectacular and developed a wonderful color. Chop the pork belly into large cubes like so. And while you'll be tempted to eat those succulent tender morsels right then and there, remember JT said this is lacquered pork belly. So we have to go ahead and make that lacquer, which starts in a small bowl into which we'll put one tablespoon of hoisin sauce, one tablespoon of honey, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one tablespoon of sriracha, 
and a tablespoon of gochujang, which is a Korean fermented pepper paste. And mix everything together and voila, you have your lacquer. Next, to a gated sheet pan, we'll add our pork belly. And we'll proceed to brush on that lacquer all over the pork belly so there's a nice even top coating. Now broil for five minutes or more for color until you reach a nice gooey charred crust while we work on two important garnishes. The first of which starts with three wonton wrappers, which we fold into half and cut into equal size triangles. Next, into two pans, we take our reserve duck fat, one large stainless steel pan and one cast iron. Put the majority of the duck fat into the large stainless steel pan and reserve maybe a tablespoon for the cast iron. I also add a quarter cup of vegetable oil to the stainless steel pan so that the wontons fry easier. You want your cast iron skillet to be piping hot and you want your stainless steel skillet to be at exactly 360 degrees. And when that cast iron is piping hot, which we can test by flicking some water onto it, we'll throw on a few shishito peppers, which we'll allow to blister. Once that duck fat slash oil has heated to 360 degrees, first give your shishitos a quick turn, and next, fry these wonton wrappers. Now remember, these will cook quickly, so make sure you turn them quickly, and then get them off the heat and onto a paper towel lined plate as soon as possible. And do the same with the shishitos, although I skipped the paper towel. And at long last, it's time to work on our apple teeny, for which we'll need one small shaker tin, into which we'll put two ounces of gin, one ounce of Midori, which is a Japanese liqueur made of melons, one ounce of apple brandy, I'm just using a cheap E and J, and one ounce of this sour apple schnapps, which I tried my best to avoid, but is rather necessary in this cocktail. And finally, one half ounce of lime. Now put ice in the big tin, and lock in your small tin and give everything a nice good shake. Meanwhile, your pork has just come out of the broiler and it looks incredible. And it is finally time to plate. First, we'll lay down our blister chichitos, followed by our tuna tartare, which typically goes in its own bowl. Next come the wonton chips. And finally, the star of the show, the lacquered pork with ginger confit. And after some quick rearranging and cleaning because it's your first time plating on camera, Grab one chilled martini glass and double strain your cocktail into the martini glass. Garnish with a green apple slice. And it's typically traditional to put a little ponzu at the base of your tuna tartare. And there you have it. Your lacquered pork with ginger confit and tuna tartare along with your apple teeny is finally done. There's nothing left to do but to taste it. First, we'll start with the tuna tartare, which is absolutely incredible and rivals anything I've ever had in a restaurant before. Next, we'll try our lacquered pork, which is equally spectacular with the charred outside from the lacquer and the tender inside from the confit. But how does everything pair together with an apple teeny? You know what? Surprisingly well, actually. The sweet and sour from the apple teeny pairs great with the spicy tang of the pork and that bright acidity of the tuna tartare. I have to say, overall, I'm giving this pairing one and one mangled thumb up. If you like the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. If you have any ideas for episodes, please list them in the comments below. Full recipes will be in the link in the video description. And don't forget to join us next week when we make a pairing from the Big Lebowski. Thank you for watching.